Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT Varsity. As part of getting started uh, with DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database, we will try to recollect what, what is covered so far. And also I will talk uh, about pricing and where my code is. And also I will recollect what all the topics covered so far. So when it comes to DynamoDB pricing, before getting into, into details of the pricing, uh, let's think about what needs to be done to just start developing um, uh, an application which requires scalability. It's a simple application, not no transactions. So uh, take the example of something like LinkedIn endorsements. If you want to start um, application like this, like it, you have to provision the servers, you have to set up uh, install OS operating system, you have to configure networking, you have to provision uh, storage, uh, add the storage to the servers. After doing all these things like provisioning the servers, provisioning the storage, configure networking, install OS, you have to install the database and uh, it will take at least a few weeks to just start um, uh, developing, uh, uh, to, to just start developing of the business application unless you, you try to use your laptop which have its own set of issues. When it comes to DynamoDB, uh, AWS takes care of all those things. There is no need to uh, provision, provision the servers. There is no need to provision storage. There is no need to configure the network between the servers. There is no need to uh, uh, install operating system and the database. It's already there. You just have to set up the account. Uh, start creating the tables and boom you are you can start developing your application within minutes so you you end up saving a lot of costs over there but how much DynamoDB actually costs so it depends upon your use case um, and how many concurrent users uh, you want to support uh, with for every given second the price solely depends upon that so let me uh, log into the I already logged into it and uh, when you actually try to create a table, they charge on table basis. They don't charge on database basis, they charge on table basis. So let me go to list tables and click on create table. Okay. And uh, when once you give the table name and uh, call one or let me say it as key itself, key. And hit on continue and I don't want to store any indexes and hit on continue here it will talk about the throughput capacity so your price will depend upon the throughput capacity so for one read capacity per second and one write capacity per second it costs you 59 cents per month okay so using this capacity you can uh, You can insert 60 seconds into 60 minutes into 24 hours into 30 days. So you can have insert uh, as well as read 2 million, 2.5 million items in DynamoDB. So it not depends. It, it will not depend upon the items but it is depending upon it. So you can actually have 2.5 million read requests or write requests. So you can have only one record and read those many times, or you can have as many records up to 2.5 million to read or write once uh, in a month. So depending upon the IO requests, the cost vary. Okay, so for this configuration, it will be 59 cents per month. If it is uh, 10 read requests, and 10 write requests it is five dollar 81 cents so it all depends upon how many concurrent reads and writes it has to support within a given second so for the endorsement type of application if there are 1 million uh, uh, users and if there uh, if there are 10 uh, let's say write requests will be less let's say there are two write requests per second and 10 read requests per second so you can have 5 million inserts into the table 
because for, for one request you can support 2.5 for two right requests you can have 5 million requests in a month uh, in uh, right request in, in a month to a table and uh, you can have actually have 25 million read requests if those many users uh, are if many users try to read so many times uh, in a month okay so this capacity is per second basis and whether you use this much capacity or not you have to pay for it the reason probably is that it uh, amazon might have to take care of certain resources uh, pulled for you so that you will uh, your performance you get the performance of whatever you are trying to achieve like how many read uh, capacity units you want per second and how many write capacity units you want per second and also i um, depending upon so for, uh, again if you have indexes on the existing table like uh, secondary indexes so uh, one write request can translate into multiple write requests so you need to understand uh, all those uh, dependencies by going through the pricing details and it will give you all, all the necessary details to estimate your costs you have to do thorough analysis and based upon that you can provision the uh, instances sorry you can start creating the tables with uh, provisioned write capacity and read capacity into your DynamoDB table so it's very cheap to get started uh, it's almost free to get started and very cheap to and develop a small scale to medium scale web applications uh, which where you pay or only for the resources you are trying to use uh, to support your capacity uh, provision capacity so that is about pricing you can get uh, get into the details here now i will talk about the code it's in github account so uh, the code is there in github account so if you go to my github account on dgajraju d g a d i r a j u this is my account name uh, for data you can click on data and you can click on nysc and you can uh, have this nysc.tar.gz the files might not be the uh, in the same format as i have demonstrated so you have to make certain changes to your java programs after downloading the data so that it works as expected um, understanding the limitations of command line interface uh, downloadable version and uh, then there is another repository called code wherein uh, there is a directory called nosql uh, except dynamo all others like hbase cassandra and mongo and probably other nosql databases uh, will be mostly maven projects whereas dynamo is a aws project uh, we set up using AWS plugin. Probably there might be a way to set it up as a Maven also, but I I didn't explore that yet. So these are the uh, shell scripts which are used. Uh, these are the scripts uh, which have those uh, uh, AWS commands to interact with DynamoDB and uh, uh, create table, delete table, insert table into the uh, sorry insert data into the um, uh, DynamoDB tables and also scan and query. So these two are the uh, scripts or files. And then uh, the code is actually under source directory. Uh, so this Amazon DynamoDB sample.java is actually uh, 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 is actually the one which is created when we actually uh, set up a, uh, Eclipse with AWS plugin. And these four are the programs which which support our data set which is new york stock exchange this file you can ignore yeah i will delete that this is and this will be used for different purpose it should not be here okay so that being said uh, uh, and that's it so let's recap what we have covered we have covered uh, uh, the difference between dynamodb and uh, rdbms and then dynamodb architecture which is a NoSQL type of uh, thing. And then we have seen how we can actually set up DynamoDB on AWS and also uh, virtual machine. And also we have seen uh, how we can uh, uh, perform primitive operations of creating tables, deleting tables, inserting, scanning, and querying from both command line as well as Java programs. And then we have discussed about data model and pricing of AWS. 
that being said i hope you are enjoying the content so far on my channel if you like this video please click on the like button if you want to provide feedback or ask any technical questions please use the comment section of the video and uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will see a lot more content like this over time the channel will get only bigger and better thank you bye